So upgrading your operating system storage device to a larger and faster one isn't as simple as just copying and pasting over all the files. If you want to keep all your files and programs rather than doing a clean install of the operating system, you'll have to properly clone the old drive to the new one. But in order to get the new drive to boot, you need to copy over multiple partitions and manage details that most casual users probably don't have time for. Well thankfully, there's free software available for Windows that makes the whole process very simple. So stay tuned to learn how. Hey what's up everyone, it's PhaserTech, back again with a quick guide on how to copy your Windows operating system over to a new SSD. Now this process hasn't always been very simple, but thanks to free software such as Macrium Reflect, the process is very simple these days. Macrium offers a free version that features a number of backup and cloning options, perfect for what we need today. Also, I'll be doing this guide on the Evolve 3 Maestro. A $60 laptop that I've made a few videos about, so if you haven't seen them already, you can check them out here. One of my viewers asked me to do this guide, since a common upgrade to do on this laptop is to replace the LTE card and install an SSD. But this only applies to the older version of the laptop, since they removed this feature on the newer versions. And one last thing, this software should work with any version of Windows, including Windows 11. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here I have a freshly installed copy of Windows 10 on the built-in storage, and we're going to transfer it over to the 256 gig SSD I installed in the laptop. The first thing we'll do is open our browser and search for Macrium Reflect. Go to Macrium's site and scroll down to Reflect 8 Free and click Download Free. A pop-up will ask you if you need a personal or commercial license both of which are free, and your email in order to get the license. After you enter it, check your email to find the download link. Also take note of your registration code in case you need it later, but you don't need it for home use. Open the link and the download should start. Once it's finished, open it and you'll be presented with the installer. Default settings are fine, so hit download. Once that's finished, it will take a minute before it loads, and you'll see this screen here. Click Next and accept the following prompts. You can register if you want, but I'm going to skip it this time. Continue and click Next to finish the installation. Once it's done installing, click Finish and it will launch by default. Now the cloning option we're looking for isn't so obvious, and it took me a few minutes to find it at first. But all you need to do is click on the disk you want to be copied, and then the clone this disk option will appear under it. Click this, and then go to select a disk to clone to. You'll see the other disks in your system. Select the one you want as the destination. Also, it's very important that you select the correct disk as the destination, because if you accidentally select the wrong disk, it's gonna be erased. So proceed with caution. Now simply click Copy Partitions, and then select Shrink or Extend to fill the target disk. This will ensure that all the space is used in the new drive, even if it's a different size than your original one. Now click Next and Finish, then click OK to start the cloning. This might take a while depending on the size of your drive. Once it's done, click OK then Close, and finally reboot the system. Now all we need to do is go into the BIOS and change the boot order. After you click reboot, wait till you see the boot screen and then tap delete to enter the BIOS. I usually tap it a few times just to be sure. Also the key used to enter the BIOS can vary between different motherboards, but delete is probably the most common one. Once you're in the BIOS, go to the boot section and then select boot option number one. You should see multiple entries for Windows Boot Manager, and at least one of them should show which drive it's on. Here you can see the Dogfish SSD 256GB drive that I installed, so I'll select this as my first boot option. Now head over to Save and Exit and select Save Changes and Reset. Again, these options might look slightly different on your particular motherboard, but they will more or less be similar enough that you should be able to figure it out. 
Now, when the system boots back up, you should be running it on your new drive. Let's open up Windows Explorer and look at our system drives to verify this. And there we see it. The C drive is running off the new 256GB SSD that I installed. And that's it, we're all done. Now if everything seems to be working, we can go ahead and wipe the old drive and use it as extra storage. To do that, simply right click it and go to Format. Select the default settings, enter a name, and then click OK. So that was extremely easy to do thanks to Macrium Reflect. There are many other options out there that will achieve the same result, but most of them aren't as easy as this one. However, Reflect is only available for Windows, so if you're a Linux user and would like to see how to do this, drop a comment below and I'll make a guide for that too. So that's all I've got today. It was a short one, but if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Not only do I do these sort of guides, I also cover programming, circuits, 3D printers, and more. So please stay tuned. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.